We have pursued almost every way that we can think of to encode information in compact and long-lasting forms, most notably DNA. What we're aiming to do in a grand sense, basically, is to encode information into living cells over time. So we want to be able to write new information into the genome. We use the CRISPR adaptation system, and so this is a, a viral defense system that is natively in bacteria, and it acquires usually sequences from viruses. We found that we could hijack the system and have it acquire sequences that we provided. We can use that to then generate these, what we call molecular records or, or recordings into the genome of a living bacteria. And in order to put constraints on the sequences, we had them contain information, and the information we used was images. So we used static images, and then we used um, moving images, which we delivered over time to living bacteria. And then we were able to sequence those bacteria and, and reconstruct the images. You want to illustrate what its power is, and, and motion pictures are one of the largest data sets that we have, but it also represents that we're trying to record biological information over time. And so a horse galloping is biological information over time, and is one of the first examples of recording any kind of motion, especially biological motion. We take all the pixels of an image, we split them up, and then we encode them into DNA. And we bring those into the cell by a variety of means, CRISPR, Cas1 and 2, store this in a linear array in order of appearance, which is very convenient for us. And then finally, once they're in the array in order, we can then take a population of cells that have had this experience. We get their genomes out and sequence them, uh, and we just sequence that one locus, the CRISPR array, and from that uh, we can reconstruct the information that we actually put in. The capacity of a bacterial cell for information storage is limited, and so in a way we're getting ahead of the game by storing information in a bacterial population because the population has more storage. Uh, so you could, you could imagine that maybe a bacterium has room for four megabytes of information or so before it starts squeezing out the nat native genome. Uh, we're using much less than that, but if you have billions of cells, you can now get millions of gigabytes of information rather than merely megabytes. I would hope that molecular recorders over time will become a, a standard thing that is used in all experimental biology. Right now, if you're trying to get information out of cells, you have to either be watching them or disrupt the system, um, take, take the data out of the cells. With a molecular recorder, the cell is cataloging its own data. A, a system can be allowed to progress and develop um, without an interference by the experimenter, be logging data that whole time, and then you go in and you collect it at the end. Uh, so this really changes the way that you would be able to study complex systems in biology.